Hello, I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy, and welcome to another edition of Seafood Source TV, the bi-weekly video blog bringing you news, information, and insights into the world of the seafood industry. This week, more fallout from the Russian trade ban in Europe, a regional American retailer settles its internal fights and gets back on its feet, and a new financial tool is out for those who are looking to learn more about traceability. But first, we've already written about a story recently unveiled by Consumer Reports magazine that claimed to offer good advice to the public about mercury contamination in canned tuna. But the misinformation the magazine is putting out makes it worth a second look this week. The magazine, which is better known in the U.S. for its reviews of consumer electronics and other non-food related mass market items, said in its story that pregnant women should not eat any canned tuna of any kind. Now this clashes with advice from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, which has sent, uh, said that a woman of childbearing age can eat as much as 12 ounces of fish per week. The FDA does advise against eating large amounts of certain long-living ocean predators, including shark, tilefish, swordfish, and king mackerel, but the Consumer Reports reviewers say they don't agree with the FDA regarding canned tuna. And the FDA told us that the article only focuses on the potential damage from mercury and doesn't address the benefits of eating seafood. In a paper published in May of this year, the FDA noted that the benefits outweigh the risks to the point that pregnant women could eat more seafood in a week than the average person might consume in a month and still expect their children's IQ to benefit. The Consumer Reports article also ignores more data from Nick Ralston, a scientist at the University of North Dakota whom we've interviewed here on Seafood Source TV. Now, his peer-reviewed research indicates that high amounts of selenium in many species, including canned tuna, further compensates for any potential ill effects from mercury. And yet, Consumer Reports still says canned tuna is dangerous. The magazine, which is supposed to provide objective analysis, links to material on its website from the nonprofit environmental activist group Turtle Island Restoration Network including the nonprofit's so-called Mercury Calculator, an online forum that, that critics have blasted for being inaccurate and inherently biased against the tuna fishing industry, which the nonprofit believes is directly responsible for harming sea turtle populations in the open ocean. Consumer Reports has drawn criticism before for its reporting on food health issues, and unfortunately, this latest offering by the magazine does nothing to boost the publication's credibility when it comes to judging food safety. That's Seafood Source's second, source, second look this week. Elsewhere in the news, Russia has shown no signs of backing down on its trade ban on seafood imports from Western countries, and this week there is one small player in Europe that could stand to benefit. The Faroe Islands made headlines when the small country, which is technically a part of Denmark, together with Iceland waged the mackerel wars with the rest of Europe and Norway, fighting for years over small pelagic quotas until burying the hatchet earlier this year. At the time, the Faroes were considered separate from the EU despite Denmark's membership in the EU, the, this quasi-autonomy means that EU economic sanctions against Russia did not involve the Faroes, and thus it looks like the retaliatory Russian trade ban won't affect them. A report on Bloomberg News this week indicates that the Faroes could benefit greatly from this. They produce and sell fresh salmon, and with the Russian market suddenly experiencing a shortage, prices are high there, and the Faroes are only one of a handful of countries that can actually export salmon to Russia now. So it'll be interesting to see how the Faroese exports fare long term. And the ban has finally gotten Maria Damanaki to issue a statement. European Fisheries Association Europesh, Europesh recently criticized the European Commissioner of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries for her, quote, inaction in the face of the ban. Damanaki pledged her support for European fisheries this week, noting EU-based exporters that were suffering as a result of the ban may find financial relief via the European Maritime Fisheries Fund. Damanaki's pledge of support earned praise from Europesh, which called it a step in the right direction. Seafood companies that are looking to improve their traceability but don't know how much it will cost them might find a new online tool useful. The Institute of Food Technologists Global Food Traceability Center has created what it is calling an online seafood traceability tool. Companies can use the tool to determine the costs and benefits associated with improved traceability based on the answers to a series of questions. The tool is geared toward any company in the seafood industry, but organizers said the tool will be especially useful to smaller businesses that don't have the need, time, or resources for an exhaustive study of the subject. And finally this week here in the United States, the Market Basket supermarket chain is back up and running. The chain, which has been an institution in the upper northeast region of the country, fell on hard times this summer after a dispute between the company's owners led to a staff walkout and store closures. Now the dispute has been resolved and the stores are reopening. That's good news for seafood suppliers such as Boston Sword and Tuna, a company that had cut ties with the supermarket chain during the dispute but has since reestablished talks. That's it for this edition of Seafood Source TV, but we'll be back in two weeks with more news, information, and insights into the world of the seafood industry. 
I'm Seafood Source Editor Sean Murphy saying thanks for watching. We'll see you online.